Hey yo, good evening viewers of the tube. My name is Tyler and welcome to the channel that has chosen not to get stuck in front of a green screen and come right out into the open world of Miami. We are continually improving, moving and downright grooving. Well, let's get this crypto party started because it's time for Chico Crypto. Let's begin today's show off with a little look-see into the recent price action of Bitcoin. As we know, the markets were looking bullish early last week, with the price breaking 5640 for some time. Then on Friday, the bomb was dropped. The Tether and Bitfinex scandal news dropped and the price got crushed, getting below $5,200 for a short amount of time. Then we went into a sideways BART pattern around 5280 over the weekend. And then we had one last dip on Monday. But now the price has been moving steadily up and as of yesterday, the price broke $5,500. There was also a very bullish technical indicator that just happened. With yesterday's price movements, Bitcoin completed the golden cross. For those of you who don't know what that is, it's a pattern indicating the potential for a major rally. This appears on a chart when the short-term moving average crosses above its long-term moving average. As we can see from this chart, the 50-day moving average is the orange line and it rose above the long-term 200-day moving average, the blue line. Does this indicate a short-term price rally? Well, I will have to wait and see because I shoot these videos a day ahead. You would think with all the bad news coming out, the price wouldn't be reacting like this. The largest trading pair, USDT, is only 74% back. Bitfinex is being investigated, and two people are charged with major financial crimes who provided shadow banking to Bitfinex. Yet the price is still rising and acting like it doesn't care. Is this a fake out by the whales using one last pump to get one last FOMO before the tether bombshell really explodes? Could be, and my thoughts on that will be in another video coming soon. For the rest of today's show, I don't want to think about all the FUD but look into what is good going on in Bitcoin and across the crypto industry. First, the number of Bitcoin transactions per day is pushing once again up to levels only seen in the last bull run. Still hasn't broke the record, but it's within 50,000. Even with the transactions reaching bull run levels, the transaction fees are minuscule in comparison to the last bull run. Average Bitcoin fee during the peak of the bull run was over $35. As of right now, the average transaction fee is around 35 cents. This goes to show you that innovation around Bitcoin has helped to reduce these fees. This includes SegWit, which makes transactions smaller by removing signature data while increasing block capacity. SegWit hasn't even been fully adopted yet either, accounting for just over 40% of all Bitcoin transactions. Also, transaction batching is being used by many exchanges, which includes multiple payments in one Bitcoin transaction. This wasn't even possible in 2016, and when the 2017 bull run took place, it started to become more common to save on fees, up to 80% depending on how many transactions are batched together. As of today, 12% of all Bitcoin transactions are batched. Of course, what also contributed to the high fees in 2017 was the Bitcoin cash attack, where Roger Veer, Fake Toshi, and Jihan Wu spammed the meme pool with fake transactions. Second, Square, the payment processing company that helps millions of businesses across the globe accept credit card payments, turned to Bitcoin in early 2018. Now, through their mobile application called the Cash App, they allowed users to buy and sell Bitcoin with any payment method connected to the app. Well, Square just released their quarter one earnings and Bitcoin revenue is flying through the roof. According to their financial documents submitted to the SEC, they had Bitcoin revenue of over $65.5 million, but with costs of just over $64.6 million. They made $820,000 in profit. Profit of Square does not matter to us, but what matters is the growth. From the same time last year, they nearly doubled their Bitcoin revenue, which means people are buying and are using the app 100% more. And the people buying aren't your intermediate to expert traders who have been in the markets for some time. A majority of the buyers are fresh blood. 
This is a really, really good sign. Now, most of us should know that Fidelity is getting involved with cryptocurrency. Last October, Fidelity announced it would be launching a digital asset service called Fidelity Digital Assets. This service is for institutional clients, and they already have begun custody solutions for a select few. They are aiming for a full release here soon and just released a research report aiming to gauge how pensions, family offices, hedge funds, endowments, and foundations feel about owning cryptocurrency. They surveyed over 400 institutional clients and the results came back very good. When surveyed about what they find appealing about digital assets, 47% responded it was an innovative tech play. 46% responded it's not correlated to other assets. 27% said it has a high potential upside and 25% responded that it enables decentralization. Nearly half of those surveyed see a place for digital assets in their portfolios. 32% see it in their portfolios as an alternative asset class, while 15% see it in their portfolios as its own independent asset class. Also, about 22% of institutional investors already have some exposure to digital assets, and 40% responded saying they are open to future investments in this asset class within the next five years. When asked about their concerns regarding storage and custodian options, security and safety were the most important considerations. Fidelity said these results showed signs of momentum. This institutional sentiment mirrors many of the positive developments they have been observing, like continued venture investments, a developing ecosystem, and increasing regulatory conversations. I would say this quarter or next, we will see the launch of Fidelity Digital Assets, because at the end of January of this year, they said the crypto trading and storage platform is in final testing in the process of refinement periods. Another big thing making waves is an advertisement for Bitcoin investments through the company Grayscale Investments. It looks like the gold versus Bitcoin debate is heating up and my video I dropped on Sunday was perfect timing. Let's watch that advertisement now. Why did you invest in gold? Are you living in the past? In a digital world, gold shouldn't weigh down your portfolio. You see where things are going. Digital currencies like Bitcoin are the future. They're secure, borderless, and unlike gold, they actually have utility. Leave the pack behind. It's time to drop gold. Go digital, go grayscale. Now, some people will have their words about Grayscale and who is behind the company like Barry Silbert, but the advertising campaign that Bitcoin is gold 2.0 is doing what it was made to do, spark conversations and get people, especially gold bugs, all riled up. Well, viewers, as we can see, good things are happening, but the monkey hanging on Bitcoin called Tether is not going to go away. The price is rising, but if Tether implodes, some radical changes will come to the cryptocurrency markets. Will it be good or bad? You're going to have to wait for that video. Cheers. I'll see you next time.